Are you one of those curious souls that wants to know everything there is to know about Yellow Productions? Then this video is for you. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this question, I'll be answering things like, what is the most Googled question about Yellow Productions? Who is this OC girl that you always talk about anyway? And I'll be sharing the interesting fact that I did not even graduate from high school. That's right, Chris Rainey does not have a high school diploma. More about that in interesting fact number 26. So let's get started with number one. The first interesting fact about Yellow Productions is that the first video that I put up on this channel was in 2008, titled Norway in a Nutshell, right there. And if you ever wondered what Chris looks like in a beard, you're gonna find it right there. That is one of the few videos you'll ever find me wearing a beard. I just don't like how beards feel really too prickly, this and that. And so since growing a beard in that video, I have never grown a beard since that trip. Interesting fact number two, the most Googled question about Yellow Productions. You can see the autocomplete here. Even before Yellow Productions travel guides, either before Yellow Productions Las Vegas, is Yellow Productions wife. That's what everybody wants to know about Yellow Productions wife, and that is OC Girl. Who is this OC Girl? OC, what's that stand for? Orange County. We live in Orange County, California, and there you get OC Girl. We have been married for 12 years now and uh, going strong. We've been travel buddies, and why isn't she... Why isn't she in it more? She likes to be behind the camera. Somebody has to hold the camera. If you want to see more about OC Girl, though, she is on Instagram, and you can find her over at ocgirl.notebook over there on the IG, as the cool kids call it. The third interesting fact about Yellow Productions is that the first travel video we ever did was pre-2008. It wasn't Norway in a nutshell. The first travel video we ever did was right here, 2004 to Japan. That's right. Uh, and we did the golden route in Japan. We visited Osaka. We visited Kyoto, Hakone, and Tokyo. Uh, people say, Chris, when did you fall in love with travel? It was definitely on that trip. That was my first camcorder. Made these great videos. Chris, where are they? Why aren't they on YouTube? They use way too many copyrighted songs as I did back then because they weren't going anywhere. Fun to share with friends and family. Uh, the fourth interesting fact is that I didn't used to like Japanese food. Before that trip to Japan, I would actually say I, I dislike Japanese food. If you would have said in 2003 or before, Chris, would you like to get some Japanese food? I would probably say I would like to eat just about anything else, uh, in particular sushi. I'd want to have nothing to do with sushi. Uh, but on that trip to Japan, I bought a, I brought a whole box of Power Bars with me because I was convinced I was going to hate all of the food and I needed to have something to eat while we're in Japan for a couple weeks. And OC Girl said, uh, well, actually, we went to a sushi place and I was going to order the fried chicken because they got karage on the menu. And she was like, you can't. You can't order the fried chicken. Or at a sushi restaurant, you got to order the sushi. And let me tell you, one of the, the first sushi things I got was this chirashi bowl right here from a Japanese fish market. <clears throat> Changed my mind completely. I'm like, ooh, good raw fish doesn't taste fishy. It tastes fresh. Frankly, it's delicious. And now I consider myself a sushi snob. So it's amazing how that all works. Number five is uh, I also used to hate kimchi with a passion. If you're not familiar with kimchi, I would consider it the Korean national dish. I mean, it's not really a main dish, but it's a side dish. They've lot, got lots of side dishes in Korea, but in particular, um, spicy pickled cabbage that has garlic and has uh, like chili on it. Usually it's pickled, fermented for weeks, months. This one here was fermented for three years that we had while we were on our last trip to Korea. And... Um, yeah, we have this running joke in our relationship, Osigro and I, that um, I, she loves Korean restaurants. I did not, and um, I couldn't eat the kimchi at all. And I was like, who can eat this? The funny part now is that when we go to a Korean restaurant, I eat more kimchi than OC Girl does today. Uh, the sixth interesting fact is that, um, you know, OC Girl and I almost didn't make it past our second date. That's right. Why not? Well, because uh, first date, I picked a restaurant. Second date, she picked a restaurant. It was Korean food. It was so spicy. It was so spicy. 
that I was like, I don't know if this is what we're going to eat all the time. I don't know if I can make it, but I'm so glad uh, that I did and that we made it past that. And then we go to Korea and it turns out I actually, I actually like some of these things. You know, when they say some things are an acquired taste, I think I had to build up that spicy level. I will still say red things still scare me in particular red Sichuan food, the spicy level or like the numbingness of Sichuan food. My tongue is still, still working on acquiring that taste. The seventh interesting fact is that uh, OC Girl has actually appeared in more videos than people realize. And if you wanna see her on camera, look in the hotel reviews. There are mirrors in hotel reviews and so that's often where you're gonna get your sneak peek of who is running that camera. The eighth, <clears throat> the eighth interesting fact, and OC Girl said I need to put this one in here. She wanted me to tell you this one, that I, Chris Rainey, am not a fan of eating leftovers. That's right. I like my food fresh. I really don't like it later. Uh, I never take a doggy bag home from a restaurant. I eat what's there. What I don't eat, I just, I just don't eat it anymore. I just, I like my food fresh. Fresh is better in my mind. But let me tell you, with a two-year-old in the house, I have learned to eat leftovers because the magic of a microwave is truly amazing and being able to toss something in there and just heat it up uh, is truly wonderful. And so leftovers, turns out, uh, there's actually a pretty convenient thing about being able to just heat up some food and not always having to go out and get it. Because by the way, when you're traveling with one of these and a car seat and buckle them in and high chairs and booster chairs and bibs and all that stuff, it uh, becomes a little bit of a challenge for sure. The Number nine is that the second most Googled thing or the most Googled thing related to is Yellow Productions. If you put is Yellow Productions into Google, it only comes up with one autocomplete, which is is Yellow Productions legit? I don't, I don't even know what that means. What does is Yellow Productions legit mean? I don't know. Can, 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 somebody, can somebody help me understand that one? Uh, I'm going to go on to number 10 in just a second. So people often ask Chris, what about breakfast? You know, you talk about a lot of food, but you don't talk about breakfast. You talk about lunch and dinner. What about breakfast? What do you like for breakfast? So I'm going to get to a number 10, but before I do that, I want to share uh, what we got going on in the chat. Uh, Brandon says, give your leftovers to me, Chris. I will send them your way. Oliver joining the live says, my first time sending a live message. Great. Welcome. Oliver, uh, Brandon says, I occasionally see her in the mirrors. You have a good eye, Brandon. Emmett says, good decision to keep going forward with OC Girl. I think so. Uh, Garrett says, kimchi ramen tastes good, but so spicy. I, kimchi ramen is probably a little bit too spicy for me. Twitting Sarah is in the same camp with me about sushi that says, I used to, I didn't used to like sushi, but now I really enjoy it and also Kim Chi. Uh, and Alex said, related to that first picture we saw, I was such a baby in 2000. That's right. I was a baby. Um, and uh, Emmett, would have guessed related to the number one Google thing that Vegas was the number one question. No, now we know. It is the enigma of OC Girl. Uh, all right. <clears throat> and uh, Emmett gives a clue to say, I think legit might be them asking if you're giving them factual information. I hope it turns out that I am, or I hope they figure that out. Uh, Jake asks if the traveling princess has tried kimchi yet. She tried it. We get Korean food from Uber Eats and things like that. We bring it home. She picked it up once and quickly got this face. Of, ah! And then when she gets spicy things, she tries to wipe her tongue. <laughs> wipe the spice off. So she has definitely not picked that up. Uh, and Stanford Bridge says, I would guess that travel channel that isn't legit is sponsored and therefore biased in its reviews. Well, I hope everybody knows I am unbiased. The opinions here are only that of my own and <clears throat> maybe not even all that good sometimes. All right, let's go on to uh, number 10. The 10th interesting fact about my typical breakfast. My typical breakfast Every morning when I'm at home, two pancakes, two pieces of bacon, a sunny side up egg, and a glass of apple juice. Chris, why apple juice? Why not orange juice? As I have gotten older, apparently stomach acid is a thing, orange juice too acidic. Apple juice neutralizes the acid, and so apple juice just keeps me going for the day a lot better than orange juice does. Chris, do you really, do you really make pancakes every day? I make the batter. 
add the water, stir it up, put the bacon on the grill. After the bacon's done, cook the pancakes, crack the egg on it, sizzle it. I love it. I also, uh, you can tell when I do my hotel reviews, breakfast is a big part of me for hotel reviews uh, and makes a big part of the hotel rating. The number 11 is my most frequented restaurant is In-N-Out Burger. Uh, I typically eat at In-N-Out Burger twice a week, I would say, currently, though there have been times in my life where I, you could say I would have been there four times a week. Mm. What am I drinking today? By the way, today I am drinking a Gyokuro milk tea from Oro Bay. What is Oro Bay? Oro Bay, uh, the merging of uh, the Italian word for gold and the Chinese word for cup, Oro Bay. It's a place that kind of uses an Italian style coffee press to make tea in this high pressure thing. But back to In N Out Burger. Uh, what do I get from In N Out Burger? <clears throat> double, double, extra everything. What does OC Girl get? She likes hers. Protein style. That's no bun. You wrap it in lettuce, grilled onions, raw onions, but none of those red things. No tomatoes in there. What does the traveling princess like? The traveling princess likes to get her grilled cheese plain cut into four, and she loves the stickers. Oh, so much. Twitting Sarah says, we had pancakes today, but British style. Twitting Sarah, please school me. What are British style pancakes? Um, and uh, I like I like my pancakes with extra maple syrup. Scott says, uh, breakfast looks like a great breakfast. I just have a bowl of cereal each morning with an English muffin. Perfect. Um, and Bradley asks, how do you like Shake Shack? I like Shake Shack. Shake Shack is a good burger. I think In-N-Out has a better value, um, but Shake Shack is really good. If you're willing to pay a little bit more, Shake Shack is a pretty good, but it's meatier, it's heavier, you kind of maybe even feel a little bit more. And I love Shake Shack's uh, online ordering. The fact that you can order it on an app and pick it up when you get there is pretty nice. Uh, so I would say for Kathy, when you come here, try In-N-Out and try Shake Shack. Try both, and uh, hey, you can be the judge. I know Kathy wasn't the one that asked the question, but she said she was looking forward to In-N-Out Burger. All right, the, I'm going to make this one bigger. Uh, the 12th interesting fact about me is that I have visited 29 countries. People always ask, Chris, how many countries have you visited? I counted it up for this one because I never have like a perfect answer. It is 29. You can see the ones in yellow, interesting enough, are all the countries that I've been to. What are those countries? Canada, Mexico, U.S., in Europe, in North America. If we go over to Europe... Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Monaco, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, United Kingdom, and Vatican City. That's right, that one counts. Uh, in Asia, China, Hong Kong, Japan, Macau, Singapore, South Korea, including the demilitarized zone. We've been in those blue buildings right there in the middle. You could say we've been to North Korea because technically we've been on that side of the DMZ. I did not count that as one here. <coughs> Taiwan, Thailand, and Australia. There we go. Number 13 is that uh, I have not been to South America, Africa, or India. Those are places that people ask all the time. Chris, when are you going to go to India? When are you going to go to South America? When are you going to go to Africa? Africa's probably a little further on the roadmap, um, but I don't have anything against South America or India. I would actually love to go to those places. Just our travels haven't taken us there. And South America is kind of this weird routing from the U.S. that, like, the flights that, that go to South America or Latin America don't really go from L.A. You have to go from L.A. to, like, Texas or Florida and then fly down, and it just... It's a long time to get there, so that's why we haven't uh, been there. We can like we can go to Tokyo in the time it takes us to fly down to South America. It's cheaper uh, and more convenient for us, so that's where we tend to fly. Number 14 is uh, in the number of states. People always say, Chris, how many states have you visited? And somebody actually just made this point on one of my videos talking about American myths to be like, Chris, really, you know, how many states have you actually been to? And I have been to 36 states, which means I visited more states than there are countries. This is the map of all the states that I've been to in yellow. There are more states that I haven't visited than I have, so it's easier to list those out. I have not yet been to Alaska, Iowa, Idaho, Kentucky, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, North Dakota, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Vermont, Wisconsin, or Wyoming. In that case, I've been to all of the other states. Um, and uh, Chris asked, hey, when I went to those countries in Asia, when I went to Macau, did I take the hovercraft? I don't know if it's a 
hovercraft per se. I took the ferry. Um, you know, they're like catamarans or something like that. They kind of, they do go up and go there. So yes, I took uh, one of those to get there. Um, Scottman895 says, I was supposed to go to South Africa, but my trip got canceled. Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, from Macau. I've been to Macau three times for what it's worth. Um, Gwendolyn says, which country would you highly recommend? Japan's probably our favorite, followed by Singapore. Um, those are two of our favorites we've been to. I love Singapore. I just... I don't love the weather. Uh, Jake asked if connecting in an airport counts as visiting a state. Uh, I did not count connecting in an airport as visiting a state. Um, so I actually had to like, I'd like be <clears throat> out of an airport uh, for that to count. And uh, Janelle says definitely need to see Mount Rushmore. I do. I definitely need to see Mount Rushmore. I agree with you. Uh, Emmett says I'd love to see the pyramids in Egypt, but that region gives me hesitation. It gives me hesitation as well. I would also love to see them. Um, okay. And uh, Bradley asks if I like visiting zoos. You know, sort of, but not really. And here's my sort of, but not really why. Uh, I grew up in San Diego, San Diego, world famous San Diego Zoo. I've also been to the Singapore Zoo, which I think Singapore Zoo is really the best zoo in the world. And so uh, nearly all zoos after those two zoos are kind of disappointing. I like the Smithsonian Zoo in Washington, D.C. because they've got the pandas. I like aquariums, but I like aquariums in Japan because their aquariums are just like out of this world, clean, bright. They don't smell. Um, <clears throat> and then a lot of other zoos that I go to, I, I just, I feel sad. Maybe I'm more like petting zoos then because they're smaller and pet the llamas or something like that. And uh, Jake says, uh, I count North Korea on my map because I was stationed at the DMZ or the buildings. That's very cool, Jake. It was, it was so funny. Uh, and you probably know this because you were stationed there. When we took the tour of the DMZ, um, it's basically like the U.S. Army that escorts you in there. Uh, and uh, all the people that were on the tour group to go in, they asked the question, uh, we just... Before you go in, um, we need to see a show of hands if anybody, uh, while they're in the DMZ, is planning to defect to North Korea. If you are, please let us know now. Just to let you know, there were no hands that went up. Yeah, it was pretty funny. And while we were there on the um, South Korean side, there was a North Korean tour group there that was looking at us, probably going like, hmm, I wonder what those, what those South Korean tour groups and people are like. Point Traveler said, which country have you visited has the best food? I, I mean, the two that I love too, Japan, Singapore, I'm kind of a big foodie. So I love the food in those places. I also love the food in Hong Kong, I will say. Um, and uh, Lord Rapture says, is New Zealand on your wish list? It sure is. I want to make it to New Zealand. Been to Australia, haven't made it down there, but I would like to go there. All right. Number 15, people always ask about what languages I speak. And so in addition to speaking English, I speak a little bit of Espanol, Spanish, though uh, I speak it with the real gringo American accent. Because growing up in San Diego, you just pick up a lot of those things. So you can order your uh, dos carne asada tacos or your tres chalupas from Taco Bell. We all know those are official Spanish words. Uh, I also speak a little bit of Mandarin uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, enough to order at a night market uh, so I don't starve and enough to ask where the where the bathroom is, and enough to know that I, I probably don't, I probably don't want to order the um, shake soup, or is the snake soup? Yeah, it's good if you know what those symbols are, so you know whether you're ordering the shake soup or the, or the snake soup. Um, the sixteenth is that uh, we in the Yellow Productions family don't have any dogs or cats or fish. Uh, our pet is a bunny, uh, Mr. MacGyver here. He is a Holland Lop. He is three years old, and his mission is to bring killer cuteness to the world. You can follow him on Instagram, too. Just search for MacGyver the Bunny to follow his entertaining travels. Number 17, I consider myself to be an introvert. I know, right? Chris, are you an introvert? You don't seem like an introvert. I I don't like big group hangs. I don't like happy hours. I don't like parties. Um, they really all kind of take the energy out of me. Uh, my comfort zone is by myself or in small groups. Think like four people or less. And this isn't to say that I don't like people. I don't like hanging out with people. I don't like meeting people. I just... I just prefer my people in small groups rather than big groups. And I like I like the social activities to have like defined begin time and end times. Like we're going to meet for lunch from 12 to 1.30 and then we're going to go a separate way at 1.30 because we all have things to do, you know, and there's no awkward like 
okay, who needs to go for it? Can you for it? Can I go if I got some place to be? Or I just got to go for a nap, you know? Um, and uh, so then related to that, I mean, obviously, OC Girl and I love traveling together, love traveling with the traveling princess, but I'm also totally cool traveling by myself, being the only one to eat at a Japanese breakfast restaurant right here. Chris, are you wearing the same shirt? Actually, that one's a little different, but it looks kind of similar, doesn't it? Um, <clears throat> and uh, a lot of comments about uh, the bunny being adorable. Bunny is so cute. Uh, Big Italian Meatballs says, uh, I'm surprised Taiwan isn't on the top of your must visit and must eat list. Probably number three. I just didn't get to number three. So I did a whole video about our favorite countries and this and that. So Taiwan is definitely on our top in Asia. Um, I love all the night markets and things like that there. Uh, but I will say as a... Um, <clears throat> It helps to know a little bit of Chinese if you go to Taiwan because it's not quite as approachable to the English speaker as Singapore is. That's not to say that it isn't approachable, um, but they don't get near the same amount of tourists in Taiwan as they do in Singapore, and, and English isn't their first language. But what I will say that's super great about going to Taiwan is they are super welcoming to tourists, uh, and so you really actually feel welcome, and then... Uh, I mean, you, you feel that way in Singapore, but Singapore, but Singapore just gets a lot more, so being a, a visitor to Singapore not really that special to the local Singaporeans, uh, but I think to the Taiwanese it is. Um, and uh, Richard says MacGyver would do better with a mullet and frosted tips, just like the actual MacGyver. That's right. By the way, so named because uh, MacGyver, the TV show, is one of O.C. Girl's favorite television shows. Number 18, uh, so as an introvert, I hated uh, public speaking so much growing up uh, that in college, if I ended up in a class that required an oral presentation, I would drop it and find another class that didn't. That's right. I'm not like this. Like, like seriously. If, you know, on the syllabus when they hand it out and they say these are the assignments, one of them is an oral presentation, I'd be like, nah, not going to do it. Don't like standing up in front of people. So, Chris, how did you go from there to here? And you might have heard me talk about, um, actually now, in addition to YouTube, I, like, speak on stage at conferences. Uh, so I eventually had to take a speech class when I was in college. By the way, Chris, how, how did you go to college with, without graduating from high school? We're going to talk about that in number 26. Uh, but I eventually had to take a speech class in college. San Diego State University, San Diego State University requires speech class for all majors. They only have, like, four required general education classes and one of them is a speech class. Uh, <clears throat> and even for us computer science geeks. And I found out after taking class, really, it really wasn't all that bad. I just, it was, I, it was like super good for me to be forced to just lean into it. Um, and actually, actually I found out I was pretty good at giving the presentations. And so the confidence I gained from that speech class then allowed me to just kind of go into a, a world of public speaking. This is, uh, I was speaking at the National Association of Broadcasters Conference in Las Vegas. Um, anyway, this, I'm not on stage, but there's my, my picture in yellow. Maybe, maybe I should make this bigger. There's my picture in yellow. You can see the yellow shirt up on the screen when they're saying what the, what the next track is going to be. Um, and if you say, Chris, what's the, what's the biggest audience that you've ever talked to? Uh, the biggest audience that I've ever talked to in one presentation, one room, it's 5,000 people. 5,000 people. Chris, were you nervous? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, but it worked out. It worked out fine. It worked out all good. <clears throat> 20. In addition to being an introvert, I am a nerd. Uh, I graduated at the top of my class from San Diego State in computer science. Um, straight A's in all my computer science classes. I got one. Not true. I got one A-. minus. I'm convinced the teacher who gave me the A-, minus, the professor, he had a 4.0 in his college degree, and he just wanted to keep other 4.0s down. Can I have other 4.0s coming out of here? I want to be that. So Chris, I'm going to take you, take, take you down a notch, uh, And because uh, I because I had all these straight A's in computer science. I actually ended up giving the, the graduation speech for our major there at San Diego State University. 21. I've built every computer I've ever owned that isn't a laptop. Uh, computer science major, he would think, Chris, you should build computers. Um, with the exception of the first computer that my mom bought me in the seventh grade. And uh, that one was a pre-built computer. Today, 
I have uh, two Windows desktops that I use for editing. I've got two Windows laptops that I use for streaming, four MacBook laptops, um, two MacBook Airs, and two Pros. The Pros are what I use if I need to go on the road and actually edit on the road. You see, uh, you see one of the monitors, at least, for the editing computer back here. Um, Stanford Bridge, so say related to public speaking as a professor, I probably speak publicly for a living, but I still can't say I'm totally comfortable speaking publicly. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those where if you're if you're ever truly comfortable, just like super comfortable up on stage, then you're probably not actually giving it the um, effort that it really needs. <laughs> and Jenny Fide says, uh, I think poor OC girl needs some water. You know the 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 thing about having a two year old is they bring back the uh, they bring back those little preschool colds and things like that. So that's been it's been running through the run through the family. Uh, Leela says, please give her a glass of water. I hope I hope she's doing well. She is doing well. Thank you. All right. Um, I think let me check. Yeah, she's doing well. All right. Uh, Kathy says, my kids have made their computers. They bought uh, all their parts on the web and built up. That's fantastic. That's a great way to get started. Uh, Big Italian Meatball says, what are your thoughts on Windows 11 so far? I'm using it on this computer, my streaming computer. I don't love the interface immediately because I like to have all my um, taskbar buttons separate and Windows 11 combines them all and there's no easy way to uncombine them. So my, my initial Thoughts of it aren't super fantastic. Uh, Point Traveler asks if I still surf. Not as much as I would like. I do more bodyboarding than surfing because it's, it's so much easier just to get the boogie board down to the beach than it is to bring the surfboard. Uh, and uh, Jenny Fide says, I remember those days preschoolers bringing home the bugs for sure. Can't can't get away from them. Um, and, uh, okay. Number 22. Um... So, you know, people always think, uh, like, Chris, you're a YouTuber. You have 240,000 subscribers. You must make a lot of money from this YouTube thing. Uh, and I will tell you, pretty much every penny uh, that I've ever made from Google AdSense has just gone back into all of the equipment that I use to make these videos. Turns out these things are actually pretty expensive, whether it's equipment, whether it's software, it's licenses, um, whether it's the subtitles that I put on the videos. Uh, and so, um, you know, this way, I, I appreciate the revenue. It's there. I'm not making light of it. The saying it's not anything. Uh, but uh, my goal is really just to just to make better videos uh, for everybody to enjoy. 23 is, uh, I have a day job. Um, you know, this isn't my full-time job. People often think that it is. Um, but uh, very, very involved in it. Um, but uh, my day job, Computer science is in the software industry. You know what? Sometimes I actually can wear a suit. I can clean up a little bit right there, as you see. Uh, and uh, it, you know, it turns out related to talking, though. Even though my degree is in computer science, I mentioned that speech class. It turns out I am much better about talking about software than I am actually about writing software. And so I've definitely ended up in the track where I spend my time talking about work that we do uh, as opposed to actually like writing the code myself. It's not to say that I can't. I still go in and hack up my WordPress blog every once in a while when I want to roll my sleeves up and get dirty. Uh, 24 is I have a second channel. It's called the Office Survival Guide. We're going to make this one big um, where I give you tips not just to survive the office but give you the skills you need to crush it. Uh, answering all those questions you've ever wanted to know like are there stupid questions to ask at work? Um, what are common mistakes that job seekers make? How can I ask my boss for more money? Um, what should I remove from my resume? I have not been as active on this channel as of late, just because of all the demands of being a new daddy, but it's not dead, it's not dead. We're gonna get back to that again and <clears throat> start putting more videos up on there. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, subscribe when I put the next video up, then you'll see it if you're interested in some of that. Uh, job related stuff. 25. This channel is named after the color of my car. This right here, this yellow Lexus IS300 um, was the car uh, that I had in college, but it wasn't the first car I had. The first car I had was silver. It was a silver car, and I got into an accident with a drunk driver. After getting into an accident with a drunk driver, I got the car fixed, needed to get it repainted. I was at the paint shop and said, What color shall I paint my car? 
looking up at the board, having just gone into an accident with a drunk driver, I said, what's a color somebody will see me in? And I picked yellow. I could never remember my license plate, so eventually I got a new license plate, and I got a license plate that says yellow. And uh, then you drive a yellow car with a yellow license plate. Pretty soon, everybody starts calling you yellow. I had the yellow license plate, so then, um, you know, when I graduated from college and got my first job, I went on cars.com and searched for yellow cars. One of the coolest yellow cars in San Diego that showed up near me was this yellow Lexus IS300 that I, I drove ever since. Um, but uh, now I've uh, upgraded to a dad mobile. I drive a Lexus NX, uh, the SUV. They don't come in yellow anymore. It's orange. Still moved, I moved the yellow plate over, uh, but if you see this one driving around San Diego, chances are that's Electric Rick, my dad in it, so say hi to him if you see him. 26. Uh, so I didn't graduate from high school. I mentioned this one right off the top. Uh, I do not have a high school diploma, so how did I go to college? Well, when I was 15 and a half, I took this thing called the California High School Proficiency Exam. What is that? Is that, Chris, is that the same thing as the GED? It's not the same thing as the GED. GED in the U.S. is designed for people who kind of like didn't, um, couldn't make it through high school later in their adult years to take it to um, get an equivalent of a high school diploma. The California High School Proficiency Exam is designed for kids who are in high school but want to get out early. 100 multiple choice questions, 30 minute timed essay, uh, offered twice a year in the state of California. You take it, you pass it, and the state of California hands you a high school uh, equivalency in the form of the CHSPE certificate, which was interesting actually when I started then the next semester at a community college. Um, and they, they weren't actually familiar with this. I had to like bring them the documentation from the state to be like, see, this actually says that it's the equivalent of a high school diploma. So I, my high school transcripts don't say I graduated, um, so I am I am proficient, though I am not a high school graduate. Um, and Electric Rick says the car is wonderful. Everybody can see it, and it can go very fast. Great to see my dad on. By the way, I want to give him a special shout-out uh, and wish everybody here, if you could send my dad some healing vibes right now. Um, he was riding his bicycle a couple days ago, uh, and some driver actually, like, opened their door into my dad as he came on there. Um, so he's got a broken collarbone and some bruises. Uh, but Dad's great to see you on. I hope you're healing up well. Um, but if everybody would send Electric Rick some healing vibes... Uh, so that he gets well soon, I would appreciate that. And I know he would appreciate it, too. The 27th interesting fact is that uh, I really like to wear sandals with socks. I know, fashion faux pas, uh, but it's so comfortable. Um, why? Because I actually have really bad ingrown toenails. Um, I like so bad that I've actually had like surgery on my feet a couple times for the ingrown toes. But you didn't even know there was ingrown toenail surgery. There is. Uh, and so that's often why you see me wearing the sandals with socks. It's great to have a yellow one for the picture. Chris, your socks are mismatched. I know they are. That was a sock, like a medical sock after the, after the surgery. Um, and uh, just in the chat, uh, everybody, thanks for sending the wishes uh, to my dad. Be well. Collarbone, that's the worst. Feel better soon. Uh, pray for Rick. So everybody, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the healing vibes for Yellow Productions Dad. 28, uh, related to my feet, did I mention that I wear size 14 shoes? I wear size 14. It's American size 14 shoes. They're quite big. Um, most brands of shoes only go up to size 13. And so before the days of the internet, I would always be on the lookout for shoes. Really hard to find shoes in my size. Uh, but who makes big shoes? Nike, because they make them for basketball players. Nike always makes big shoes. And so most of my shoes throughout my college and adult life were Nike shoes. I'd go to the Nike factory outlet stores where they'd have all the big sizes. Such a fan of Nikes that when OC Girl and I got married, I actually wore these Cole Haan dress shoes because Cole Haan uh, actually had a partnership with Nike and integrated Nike Air into their white dress shoes. And yes, that's my uh, white tuxedo for a wedding. People always said, Chris, you're a brave man to wear white on the wedding, but uh, it, stayed, it stayed unsoiled. People always ask how tall I am, number 29. I am six foot tall uh, and about 190 pounds on a good day. Um, but number 30, I wasn't always 190 pounds. Well, I was smaller when I was younger, but I was more uh, when I was 
in college. Uh, I used to be up to 220 pounds. Um, then I started surfing. Then I started playing Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, I'm actually quite I'm actually quite good at Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, when I used to play, I used to actually draw crowds at that arcade game. In the arcades, people would ring like a few rings to be like, that guy's pretty good at that game. So anyway, if you ever see me in person and you want to do a dance off, um, I, cha I challenge you. I challenge you to a Dance Dance Revolution duel. 31. I've been on Japanese television three times. That's right, three times on Japanese TV, so I'm really big in Japan. Uh, once, in fact, playing Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, once, we made our Fukushima series. Uh, right before the pandemic, we went to Fukushima uh, prior to the Olympics to help them promote tourism. That was a big thing, and so uh, there was a Fukushima news crew that followed us around for the day, uh, and then we were also picked up by a news crew in Fukuoka, Japan, as we were visiting the temple, who wanted to get a perspective from um, foreign visitors that were there to visit the temple. Um, but yeah, that's it. You know, you know they only put you on Japanese television playing Dance Dance Revolution when you're actually pretty good since the game came from Japan. Uh, Kathy says, I tried Dance Dance Revolution last week. It's so bad at it. The game is honestly really, really hard, and people who are good at it make it look easy, but the first, like, the songs in the difficulty are, like, one foot to ten feet in the difficulty. First time I played it, you know, some decade ago, uh, I did the one foot song, and I same, I'm so bad at it. It's so hard. Um, you know, and, like, with a one-foot difficulty song, say it's a song is 90 seconds, you know, maybe that has like 60 steps in it. Um, but the difficult songs, when you get good at it, have like 400 steps in 90 seconds. So uh, it's a lot of foot tapping. Um, James says you're being humble. Chris, you're great at TDR. All right. Well, thanks, James. I, I don't do it really to like compete with people. I just do it because it's fun. It's good exercise. I have a good time at it. Um, I want to I wanna get... I've I've not played DDR in arcade obviously in two years since the pandemic, but uh, you know hopefully when this all comes down, then uh, get back to doing that uh, a little more. Um, Jake asks um, related to my shoe size if I have a flat foot as well. I have 14 2E. I hate it. I wish I had 12 or below so I could shop at a real shoe store. I guess I guess my feet are fairly flat, but yes, it is difficult to find shoes now. I've uh, during the pandemic discovered Hoka shoes, and so I really like the Hoka Bondi shoes. 32. Um, so I finally came to the conclusion that I was a YouTuber when Osik Girl and I were in Korea. This was the trip that I showed you, the three-year-aged kimchi. This was in um, 2019. It's pandemic time, so it's like, what year are we in? This was a year before the pandemic, the year we went to um, Fukushima. We went to South Korea for South Korea's first ever YouTuber week. Uh, they invited us and they invited eight other YouTubers to come and spend a week in Korea. We traveled around with these other YouTubers. And when we were down in the south in uh, Busan, Osigro and I were shooting. Osigro with the camera, me in front of the camera. And this group of Korean school kids walked by us. And one of them in English asked, um, are you a YouTuber? To which I remarked and said, yeah, if you want to check it out, we're making a video for Yellow Productions. And I hand them a card, as I usually do when I see people. And then everybody from the school class wanted the card. And they were so excited to get the card, as you can see right here, and then show their cards in front of the camera. I mean, you can literally see the, the joy on that girl's face to be like, oh my gosh, I met a YouTuber. Um, and so that was when I finally... Uh, came to the conclusion and said, well, uh, apparently, apparently we are YouTubers now. All right. People always ask about uh, what my favorite airline is. United Airlines. United Airlines is my go-to airline. This is the card that I received maybe three or four years ago when I passed one million miles on United Airlines. Uh, and you can see it is signed uh, by the pilot. So you've seen this, maybe if you've seen the movie Up in the Air, where they come and give this like award to the guy because he's traveled like 17 billion miles or something. But they literally do this, the flight that you travel a million miles on, the pilot comes from the front of the plane to the back of the plane, um, hands you this card and says, hey, thank you very much for your loyalty. So that's uh, pretty neat uh, and has led to, um, you know, lifetime elite status and things like that with United. Uh, I don't always fly United, um, but as you can see, I've flown quite a bit with United. Uh, 
Jake asks if fans ever ask you for an autograph. Not an autograph, though they often ask to take uh, pictures, which is cool. And I've I have never turned anybody down for a picture. I've never been asked for an autograph yet. I feel like autographs are probably old school. Emmett asks if I get recognized more in the states or overseas. Uh, probably more in the states. Um, I get recognized the most in Vegas. I get recognized a lot when I'm in Hawaii. Places that I've made a lot of videos on, I get recognized on. I was recognized just this past uh, weekend when we were hiking. Chino Hill State Park. If you um, follow my Instagram stories, you'll see a fan found us on the hiking trail, uh, took a picture, and she posted it, and then uh, I shared it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> my dad, Lecture Creek, says, I was always amazed how you could dance so well just to make lots, lots of practice, probably lots of money spent on Dance Dance Revolution 2. The 34th interesting fact about me is that in addition to having Lifetime status with United, I've flown over a million miles. Uh, I've also stayed over 1,000 nights at Marriott hotels. If you want to know the count right now from Marriott.com, 1,145 nights stayed at Marriott hotels. Uh, that makes me a lifetime titanium member with Marriott. That's the card they sent me to say, Chris, you've reached this lifetime status. Um, I really like their free breakfast, particularly at uh, like their high-end hotels like JW Marriott's. The 35th interesting fact about Yellow Productions is that our favorite hotel in the world turns out it's not a Marriott. It's a Hyatt. It's not a Hyatt. It's an Ondas. It's affiliated with Hyatt. It's right here. It's the Ondas in Maui. Uh, it is an amazing hotel. It's on an amazing beach. The rooms are amazing. It just has this super interesting boutique, funky vibe. Um, I love it. So if there's ever beach hotels like Chris. What beach do you recommend I go to? What beach hotel do you recommend I go to? It is this one, the Andaz in Maui. Next week, I'm going to do a live stream all about all about Hyatt hotels. So I'll talk more about Andaz and Hyatts and all that stuff in that video. Um, but this was one, the way we discovered the Andaz in Maui um, is actually a story that I'm going to leave for you for next week. Uh, but it was having a chit chat with somebody at a Hyatt in Phoenix, of all places. 36. Although I love chain hotels for their perks and loyalty programs, and I profess uh, like how great elite programs are and this and that, when we go to Japan, we do not stay at any of the big chains. We seek out the local chains because we find that the big hotel chains really, it's a bad value at most of them in Japan. Uh, and so the best value, and actually the best hotels are really a lot of the local Japanese hotels, you know, things that look like this, uh, that, you know, have like a little lamp on them and this and that, really <clears throat> much better experience those places than the big American chains in Japan. 37. We covered this earlier, Chris, what's your favorite country? Japan's our favorite country to visit. In normal times, we would visit every other year. Um, I think at this point we've explored most of the major regions in Japan from Hokkaido in the north to Kyushu in the south. Uh, Okinawa is on our list. We've yet to, yet to go to that island. Related to Japan, number 38 is I quite enjoy the Japanese tradition of onsen bathing. Uh, onsen is Japanese word for hot springs. If you're not familiar with this culture uh, in public baths or onsen hotels, um, you basically take a bath there, a public bath with other people, gender separate, men together with men, women together with women, but you have to take your clothes off to do it, which seems really weird at first, um, but they're actually like in amazing places next to rivers in the snow. This was a foot bath in Onsen Water, so I'm, that's why I'm wearing my clothes right there. Um, but I enjoy that too, and it's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, but I've had some really interesting conversations sitting in Onsen's, like talking to an 80-year-old Japanese guy about my thoughts on President Obama. Obama, for example. He asked me, I wasn't like, dude, let me tell you about Obama. Um, 39. My most viewed video ever that I've posted to the internet is actually not one that I've put on YouTube. It's one I put on Facebook. It was a 12 second video that I made of the touchless soda fountains at In-N-Out Burger. That video, at the time I wrote this script, had over 19 million views on Facebook. That's right, 19 million views of me filling up my cup with ice and soda at In-N-Out Burger. There you go. My moral of the story is apparently uh, less face, more hand. So if you're Chris, why are your hands in this so much? I gotta, I gotta keep them in because people like the hands. And they like the cups too. Mm. <laughs> uh, Bradley asks uh, if Kyoto is the most beautiful Japanese city to you. Kyoto is beautiful, 
but it's um it's busy. There's a lot of tourists. I would say I between Kyoto. If you like, Chris, what city do you like the most? You know, if I'm looking for like an old authentic city, I really like. Kamakura, um, people often consider it like a smaller Kyoto, um, but it isn't overrun by the tourist throngs that Kyoto is. Number 40. Uh, this is about getting recognized. The question, where do I get recognized? How often do you get recognized? So uh, with 200 and oh, you can't see can't, you can't see that can you with 242,000 subscribers at the time that I made this video um, I get recognized in public fairly frequently. Um, one of my most interesting public sightings was when I was flying through San Jose Airport. Uh, this was when I was making the Modesto uh, audio tour. If any, anybody who took the Almond Blossom Cruise, the audio guide that I worked on, um, thank you for taking that. That was a lot of fun to make. Um, but before doing this whole Central Valley tour, I took a pre-trip to Modesto um, to see all the sites uh, and work on the audio we were doing for that tour. And so I flew into San Jose for that trip. And I got um, selected for secondary inspection, like, you know, for them to like look through all my stuff. And the TSA agent, not the one who was going through my bag, but the one right next to him was like, oh, you're Yellow Productions. I love your videos. And the guy who's looking through my bag is like, who's this guy? And he's like, he's a YouTuber. He does great videos. And let me tell you, that made my security inspection go so much better. So it was cool. By the way, TSA agent, San Jose, if you're watching, awesome. Great to meet you. Thanks. Thanks for the shout out. Uh, now, a lot of people ask me about um, scripts. Chris, do you, do you script out your content? Do you read it? Uh, I do not script out any of my content. I don't read anything verbatim. Um, I also don't read from a teleprompter. Some YouTubers do that. They put a teleprompter up here and they, they read from it. Uh, so many people are often impressed by um, hearing me rattle off my spiel in shots. Like, did you just remember all of that? And I don't I don't memorize things. I just try to remember about what I'm going to talk about, and maybe it comes out differently than I thought, but it usually just kind of all works out in the moment. It's actually one of the things I like about doing live streams. People go and say, Chris, why Like, why do you do a live stream every week? Well, one, it's just awesome to hang out with all of you, uh, and it's awesome to have you participate in making the video. Like, it, I think it makes a better video. I like, I love the engagement. I love the things you say. I love to just kind of talk and hang out. Um, but I also like that then this video just becomes one take. You know, when I'm recording it myself, I'll say something, I'll miss up, I'll say it again, I could say it better. I, like, I can agonize over take one, take two, take three, take four, take five, what was the best take? Where this way, there's just, there's one take and, and we're done. Um, and so that's nice just from a, a video production perspective. 42nd interesting fact about me uh, is that when people ask me what my favorite food is, I answer hamburger, pizza, Mexican, uh, in that order. Um, and so I eat it in a burger most. We talked about that already. Really enjoy Shake Shack for burgers. Habit, the habit comes in third. Five Guys kind of comes in uh, a, a distant fourth. When I'm desperate on travel, then I'll I'll break down and eat it, eat at McDonald's. I eat breakfast at McDonald's a lot more than I will eat lunch at McDonald's. Now, in addition to Dance Dance Revolution, I'm quite good at pinball. Uh, you may have seen the video I did on the Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. I visit the Pinball Hall of Fame every time I go to Las Vegas because it's the best place, in my opinion, to play pinball. Uh, oh, and before I got addicted to pinball, playing video games, you know, growing up uh, in the age I grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know, uh, Street Fighter II, Mortal Kombat at the local liquor store, the arcade, um, were super fun things to play as well. 44, um, I, I don't enjoy watching sports. I really don't like sports. Uh, people always ask me, Chris, what's your favorite sport? My answer is none. I mean, surfing, I like surfing, I like bike riding. But when people are asking Chris, what's your favorite sport? They mean um, football, soccer, baseball, hockey, none, 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 none of the above. You know, growing up in Southern California, I could either sit at home or sit in a stuffy stadium and watch the sport, or I could go outside and do it and experience it. I could either ride my bike or I could go surfing or I could sit and watch. And so I've, I've just enjoyed going out and doing things, being active rather than just sitting and, and watching something. Now, the one sport that I did play is Magic the Gathering. Chris, Magic the Gathering, it's a collectible card game and you might say that is not a sport. In fact, it is because it was televised on ESPN. If ESPN puts it on television, you know it's a sport. Uh, this is a picture of me probably when I was 16 at a uh, Magic the Gathering tournament. Um, and uh, I, I would say I was 
pretty good at Magic the Gathering, too. Um, I started playing Magic the Gathering in 1994, but I haven't played in 10 years. It's probably, probably about time I got rid of my cards. Uh, maybe I'll teach the Traveling Princess how to play when she gets older, uh, but I don't know. Maybe all she'll want to play is games in the metaverse or something. Uh, Grant asks... If you were offered a ticket to the Super Bowl, would you go? I would go. I have been to football games. I have been to baseball games. I've been to baseball games in Japan. It was really interesting to go to a baseball game in Japan to experience that. I would go to the Super Bowl, probably not because I would enjoy the game, but because I would just enjoy the experience. Um, a few years ago, some people invited me to a college basketball game in the middle of nowhere in Virginia and what Charlottesville at uh, the university there. <clears throat> And I'm like, cool, I'll go, just to be like, hey, what's a what's a big college basketball game like? And then I'm like, yeah, <laughs> this was boring. I don't need to go again. Um, a question of if I am Jewish, I am not Jewish. Uh, Kathy is also a pinhead. She has a Back to the Future pinball machine at home. Very cool. Uh, and Damon agrees with me that Mickey D's breakfast is actually not that bad. You're right. I agree. It is not that bad. Uh, and Don says, we were just in Vegas, went to the Pinball Hall of Fame. So much fun. Played air hockey. And my husband was mad because I beat him. Well done, Don. I'm pretty good at air hockey, too. So, Don, I challenge you to, uh, <clears throat> I challenge you to a game of air hockey. 46. Um, and before I get here, I saw this question. Who is your favorite YouTuber? I think... In the travel space, uh, I think my favorite YouTuber is Mark from Walter's World. Uh, you know, I think him and I have a lot of similarities in channels. I just love that he's kind of a fun-loving, genuine guy. Um, and much like me, he also has a day job. He's a uh, professor of business at the uh, University of Illinois, there where he lives. Um, okay, 46. I don't like alcohol. Uh, this is another one that I get a lot of crap about. People consider that weird. Chris, why don't you like alcohol? Um, but I really find the taste of most alcoholic beverages to just be yuck. Um, now, I have taken an appreciation for Japanese beers and for Japanese sake, but not really for wine. Uh, I don't like the taste of wine. I don't like the taste of most hard liquors. You know, even if I'm someplace like in Italy where I'm paying the same price for wine as I am for water, I will take the water because I will enjoy that better. I am really a teetotaler, as you find I like my teas. I am totally willing to spend $6 for a cup of tea or there for a fruit tea in that pick. Yifong fruit tea, Oral Bay Gyokuro tea. I like the taste of tea, not tea powder. Um, and uh, it's great to see there's some other people in the chat that I'm not the only one. Jenny Fine says I don't like alcohol either. Yeah, and so like when I look for restaurants on Yelp, um, one of the things I look at when people rate it, like I try to look at the pictures to be like, are people rating this highly just because there's a lot of alcoholic drinks or are they rating it highly because there's pictures of food? And if I see in the pictures of a restaurant that there's way too many pictures of alcohol, then I'm like, this probably isn't going to be one that I like because people like this because they can drink, not because they eat. Uh, Eddie asks if we're the same person. I don't know. Are we clones? Uh, and it's great to see uh, a lot of other people like Jake, um, and Jenny Fide and Little Penny also don't like alcohol. I also see a lot of love uh, <clears throat> for Mark on Walter's World, too. 47. Um, whenever I post a video, people always ask me, Chris, are you, are you still there? Are you still in Sacramento? Are you still in San Francisco? Are you still in Korea? Are you still in Las Vegas? If you're watching this video right now, I'm going to answer this question right away. The answer is no. It doesn't matter where it is. If I posted a video on that place and it's not Orange County, then I'm not still there. Because uh, whenever I shoot video, I got to bring it back home. I got to bring it back here. I got to edit it. Uh, and so that takes time. Uh, and so I'm never there. Um, now, that's, okay. There were a couple videos I posted while on location. When I went to Korea, I was like, I'm going to try daily vlogs. Other YouTubers do this. I'm going to shoot some video. I'm going to edit it at night when I'm in the hotel. I did that for two days. It nearly killed me. I didn't get enough sleep. I spent too much time on editing. And I'm like, I just want to enjoy the trip. I don't want to shoot and try to edit at the same time. It's too much. The videos weren't my best product because I was just trying to crank them out to get them out there. And so I don't, I don't do that anymore. Um, they all come back home to edit. 48, uh, people often ask me, Chris, does it bother you when people watch you filming in public? Um, and at first it did, but it doesn't anymore. It doesn't bother me 
actually I view it as a like a sign of uh, like respect isn't the word intrigue is probably the right word or admiration you know people stop when we pull out the camera and do something because they want to watch this interesting thing this person talking in front of the camera like oh that's what it looks like to be a YouTuber. Oh, I've seen that guy. Like, now I get to see the behind the scenes. Um, and uh, so I, uh, I just realized I'm giving him a show, and so then I give him a show. I do get concerned when I'm looking at my peripheral vision and I realize the person watching me is the security guard someplace to be like, are they going to walk over and tell me not to? If so, I need to, like, hurry up and finish my scene. 49th interesting fact about me is that, yes, I do wear clothes that aren't yellow. You can see right there, I got I got a black shirt. In the Central Cali vlog that's coming up, I wore a black shirt for one day, uh, just to see if anybody notices and see what everybody thinks about me wearing a different color once in a while. But when I travel, I do only pack yellow shirts, I, and they're all the same. I will pack however many days I got, I'll pack that plus one in case I you know, spill on it or something like that, and I need another shirt. Uh, that way, if I'm shooting over five days and I'm putting like my best eats or things to know, you don't know whether it's day one or three uh, if I shot them out of order because you you can't tell that my shirts didn't change back and forth. You know, Anthony Bourdain, rest in peace, uh, talked about doing the same thing. He would bring, like, the same type of dress shirt all the time. And 50 is, um, sometimes people mock me for being a YouTuber. I mean, they'll see me recording and they'll be like, hey, what you doing? Are you, are you like a, like a YouTuber or something? Which, of course, they mean that they mean that in a mocking way or like an insulting way, like to be like, you know, I'm going to peg you because you're clearly not a YouTuber. Uh, and of course, when they ask that question, I take a card out of my wall and I hand it to them and I say, actually, I am. If you'd like to check out the video we're making, you can find it right here. And then sometimes on the spot, they'll open up the YouTube app or their, you know, son or daughter or friend will do it and then be like, hey, hey bitch. They actually are a YouTuber. And then it's funny. It changes their tune completely. Like, they pull up YouTube, and then they see they see that number. It's this so bizarre social dynamic today. I see them in person with a camera, and they're like, this guy's a bozo. And then they pull up the YouTube app, and they see that number, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't know. It's like, it's all good. Just another person like you. Um, but I think that's it's just sort of, you know, where people will say like, oh, I just thought you were a dude with a camera. And I'm like, I, I am just a dude with a camera. I just happened to post the videos on YouTube. Uh, and Little Penny points out that, yes, being a YouTuber now is a respected job. Uniplex says people are very weird. Um, Jake asks, what is your second favorite color? My second favorite color is blue right there. Yellow and blue, they go super well together. Uh, Jenny Fide says, uh, good for you being cheerful when you give them a card and they check out your channel. I figure, you know, I just, I treat other people like I'd like to be treated. I just, I just, you know, if they start and they're kind of on that path, I'm like, again, maybe, maybe they don't know. And it's not about they know who I am, right? But just, I just answer their question, right? Um, and uh, Brandon says, just 8,000 till 250k. You're right, just 8,000 subscribers till 250k. That will be pretty exciting. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, as usual on this channel, I give away a Yellow Productions shirt, right there, Yellow Productions crew shirt, to somebody who answers my question correctly. Uh, so my question to you, is when I graduated from San Diego State University, what colors were my tassels on my hat? If you can answer that question correctly, you will win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt. I'm looking for the answers in the chat. Uh, if for some reason you don't win one, well, then you can buy one. You can head over to shop.yellow-productions.com, pick up a shirt, pick up a bag, pick up a mug, something like that. And if you're wondering, hey, Chris, when is the next live stream. Head over to update.yellow-productions.com. Get on my mailing list. I send an email day or two before. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as I'm waiting for answers to come in, uh, I will take one more question right here. Points Traveler says, would you be able to live comfortably off a YouTube salary? I would not be able to live anywhere comfortably off the current YouTube salary that I make on Google Analytics because, like I say, it all just kind of goes into the stuff that we put into these lights and things like that. Um, so, there. 
Okay. I'm looking I'm looking at answers now. Uh, let's see. We got yellow, blue, red, purple. The traveling princess has come to help us pick a winner. Still don't see the right answer. Yellow, blue, red, red, and gold. Mm, tassels were purple. I guess the question totally wrong. Red, gold, yellow. Love our sweatshirt. Red and yellow, black, black and red. Red, gold, yellow, blue, red and black. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> None of those are the right answers. Uh, the, the, uh, the correct answer, the correct answer, so I'm sorry, I guess we don't get to give away a shirt today, but the correct answer, okay. if we see right here, was red, yellow, and black. There we go, red, yellow, and black, that was the correct answer of the red tassels, and uh, and, uh, but you know what? And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, where'd it go? All right. Maybe you picked it just as I said it, Joseph Lee, but you were the first person to type it in. So congratulations. You win the Yellow Productions Crew shirt. Traveling Princess will put the order in herself for you. Send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. You'll find a link in the description below. Let me know your size and address, and I will get it right to you. Well, fellow explorers, super great hanging out with you all today. Great chatting. Usually won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next bye. video. Bye. She'll say bye. I'll see you in the next video. She will too.